Hi there, and welcome to the Curious Collective podcast, conversations designed for the conscious community to bring awareness to those holistic practices that help you live your best life. So tap into the wisdom and knowledge of our guests to heal, transform, and live as your true soulful self. So today I have with us the amazing Missy Rivers, who is a psychic medium. Now, we've never had anyone uh, that works in this field on the podcast yet, so you are the very first. Welcome, Missy. Hello, hello, lovely. Thank you. Um, It was due then, right? Absolutely. (laughs) Long overdue. Yeah. So um, can you please introduce yourself to us in the way that that you, you feel and also what it is that makes your heart sing? Um, okay, yeah. What what does it make my heart sing? Oh gosh, everything. <laughs> um, yeah, doing stuff like this and and connecting with people like you. If you were to ask me this out in the street, you know, um, what makes your heart sing? What what gets you passionate? What gets you going in life? It is. I don't mean to sound corny, but it's life in itself. You know, it's having that zest of waking up in the morning and being like, you know what? I'm so freaking grateful to be here in this experience, being here as a spirit, as a soul in this meat sack to <laughs> what, what does to, sorry, it's, yeah, pretty crude, right? Yeah, 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 I get what it. Does, what does today hold for me? Mm. You know, the goods, bads and uglies, we don't really love the the bads, but it's all part of that journey. It's all part of I get to feel emotion. I get to experience new experiences. I get to meet new people. How does that affect and ripple the t- lines of time in my life? And, you know, does this mean that? And, you know, the domino effect and witnessing that with conscious intention is freaking awesome. Um, yeah, uh, connecting and feeling yes. inspired. <laughs> so many yeses. I'm like tick, 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 tick yes. in my mind. My yeah. top values are community, connection, collaboration, and authenticity. And you just Ooh. ticked every box for me <laughs> right then. Uh, and I also awesome. love uh, my human experience. And my goal every day is to live it to its fullest expression. Yes. So yes, this is, this is beautiful, synchronous conversation. So, um, so you do psychic mediumship. Can you tell us a little bit more about what that is for any listeners that might not know? Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Um, Because it's not everyone's cup of tea. Um, It's one of the many things I do, but it's my main forte. Um, I am a psychic medium. So what that means um, is I have a business and I am a professional psychic medium. I just want to make that point that um, a lot of psychic mediums have this beautiful gift and they often do it as a hobby or as a side practice um, on top of a full-time job. Um, it doesn't mean that they're any less talented, but sometimes they're taken a little bit less seriously, which is kind of not fair. They just haven't maybe backed themselves in of it. This is my profession. This is my full-time job. It's my business. And what that means is um, the psychic part, um, if some people need me to break that down, is um, everyone is psychic, but I have honed my own ability. It's like a muscle. You've got to flex it to use it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I have honed my psychic ability, my sixth sense, so to speak, um, in order to understand how I work. So how I get messages from my spirit guides, from the universe. Um, This comes in forms of dreams, um, in premonitions. I will be sometimes doing the most random thing and I will have a flash of um, an image or a little bit of a scene play out. Um, it can be something simple like I'm chopping vegetables up for dinner and I will just have a moment and that moment will play out like a movie in my head and it will tell me a message about what the future holds, whether it's for myself, a friend, a family member, or perhaps someone I've never met before. Um, and I do my best, my very, very best. It's my intention um, to use that gift and that knowledge and insight for the highest good to help people. Mm. If I can help people um, in a reading and say, hey, you know, um, so I, sometimes I use tarot cards <clears throat> and sometimes I just use my connection and listen to what the guides have to say. Um, if I can help people, uh, I did a reading this morning and as soon as I tuned into this lady, I, I did a breathing exercise with her and I did a, a map um, a map of her body and I said, you've got issues here, here, here and here. I'm looking at it now. Um, <laughs> and um, she's like, oh, my God, you're right. And I said, well, they're telling me how we can get this sorted. If you. Oh, heck yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so um, medical mediumship or something like mm. that. But it's it's great. And she's now hopefully going to help herself um, mm. in hopefully a more natural way. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And the mediumship component is I have been blessed with 
the ability to connect with people's past over loved ones and pass mm-hmm. on messages to them to help provide insight or closure or just a little bit of um, comfort, mm. which is nice. I love that. How exciting. And how did you sort of discover that you had this gift? Has it been since a child or is it something that you've grown to develop and evolve over the years? If I had a dollar for every time someone asked oh. me that question, I would be, I mean, we would be filming this on my yacht. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's something I want to make it clear. And this is part of my business. My slogan is empowering your future. Mm. And that's what I'm seeking to do. I'm seeking to empower people. And I want to make a point to your listeners um, and your viewers that everyone is psychic. Mm-hmm. It's just, a ma- it's like you're born with muscle. It's a matter of if you use it and you train it, you get stronger. And if you don't, it gets stagnant and you may not be as useful in that area. So um, everyone's born psychic. I just had a little bit of extra oomph because it runs through my family genetics. My mum is quite intuitive. Um, she would tell me some things when I was young. She's like, okay, just stop. Um <clears throat> And your dad's going to walk in. He's going to make a comment on this, um, you know, email address that I've just written down and then we'll go make your lunch. And they won't have this, this, or this. And I was like, what? So she goes, just count to five. One, two, three, four, five. And to dad. And as, a, as an 11 year old, I'm like, oh my God, just as she said it. And she's like, okay, let's go. We won't even bother. We'll just do tuck shop today because we know we don't have this, this, and this. I don't even need to look. So, I mean, she's quite intuitive and psychic and, she may not like me saying this, but I feel like it got a little bit stronger. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I'm a water sign, which helps with the intuitive connection. Mm. Um, and yeah, so I have always had it. Um, it's just something I've drew to her, you know, credit to her as my mum. She didn't tell me, well, that's weird. She was like, trust yeah. it, trust yes. it, grow it. Okay, if you're into, if you're feeling this way, it's for a reason. Let's go with it because she learnt the hard way. Um, if she had a feeling about something and she didn't listen, ah, oh, and the disaster struck. Mm. Oh, I knew that. Why didn't I listen? So, even though it wasn't her intuition all the time, if mine kicked in, bless her cotton socks, she would listen to mine, yeah. and it was showcased to me to grow it. Um, oh, I'm getting yeah. this beautiful radiating <laughs> feeling through my whole heart. Do you know, this brings me to a really cool question. Children coming into this world right now, these new ones are like switched on to the hilt. I (laughs) saw a baby the other day and I looked at this baby and I'm like, oh my, like I felt like this baby Mm. was having a full on conversation with me Mm -hmm. with his eyes. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'm like, holy crap, you're amazing. (laughs) And this mom is like, oh, get away from my baby. They look through you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, I feel like there is a whole generation out there that are being born awake. Yes, thank yeah. you. Oh, my God, tingles all down my back. Yeah. Yes, so much, yes. So how then in World According to Missy and Kate, do we harness and embrace and encourage and support this beautiful gift we've been given with these children coming in? It, it equals, it's a very simple thing. It's, um, I was just given this, actually. I didn't come up with this. I don't want credit for this, but they just said it's to do with expression, not suppression. Yes. Whew. So I have three children myself and the, they're all intuitive. Yeah. And But the youngest in particular is teaching me to develop and strengthen my own intuition. Like she is next level. And, and it's exactly that. And I've got, you know, friends that I consult with in this beautiful conscious community that are like, I'm like, this is happening. And what I would usually perceive as bad behavior is purely expression, yes. expressing what they need to now at this young age so they don't struggle as much when they're older. And it's yeah. a really hard concept for us mm-hmm. because we've been conditioned to see things in a particular way. Yeah, in a different lens. Yeah, mm-hmm. so true, so true. And when we allow them to be their authentic, I'm not I'm not in any way condoning um um, bad parenting or bad, you know, terrible, terrible, terrible behavior. I think there is a standard that we need to set, um, but there is a difference. Boundaries. Yeah, boundaries, healthy boundaries, and that creates healthy humans, healthy yes. adults. I have this conversation with my friends a lot. There is a difference because um, in, in my community, in my friendship groups, um, in, in, you know, the space that I live in, um, there is a difference between feral and free range, <laughs> you know, Free range is a great, you know, allow them to express themselves within the safety Mm. of that network. 
feral is not okay. We don't talk, we don't swear to our parents. We don't hit our parents. Yes. We don't abuse. We don't, you know, that's not okay. But free range. Okay. How do you want to learn today? Do you want to do the maths under the tree? Do you want to, you know, mm. let's create a recipe together. Let's jump in the puddles. Let's, you mm. know, what are we going to create today? And that really evolves our well-rounded little human. What a fantastic conversation. <laughs> Hello. Yes, I'd like to think that my children are free range. Yes. yes. <laughs> what a great concept. I've never heard it put that way. So thank you so much, Missy. Oh, so tell us, you tapped into your intuition at a young age through your mother's mm-hmm. sort of encouragement. And um, what has got you to be where you are today, doing what you're doing? And I think you're in like a bricks and mortar, like you've got a physical location as well. Um. A little bit of my um, journey, I um, went to high school in Brisbane, in the north side of Brisbane. I won't disclose which which location, but the north side. Um, and I really kind of became a bit of a loner. High school is not a friend to someone who thinks of themselves, who has their own voice and who's very mm-hmm. readily to use it. And I was very, very confident, um, probably too big for my boots for a lot of my peers. Yeah. Um, that doesn't earn you the popularity contest. Um, and I'm not in the gonna, box. No, I was not in the box. And I had no desire to be in the box. I was a leader and I was like, you know what? I'll lead myself if you idiots don't want to fucking follow. Yeah. So, so, <laughs> I love it. See you later. <clears throat> so I, I went through being you know um, labeled as a bit of a, a nerd or outspoken I really they really couldn't find a label that fit me and that was okay but um I ended up getting not necessarily popularity but notoriety at lunchtime because I didn't have any friends they kind of dropped off because it wasn't cool but I ended up buying my first deck of cards when I was 14 <clears throat> oh, yes. and at lunchtime I would sit on the oval um, and just chill under the tree and I would like play with my cards and just train myself and tune. Just some, I felt I found it fun. Mm. And then word got around at high school at lunchtimes to meet me under the tree for a reading. <laughs> yes. And they would, you know, uh, uh, exchange things like I'll give you $2 or do you want my sandwich or do you want <laughs> it's my side hustle. Um, yeah, and it, it, it ended up being things would naturally develop that way and Mm. um that just took i would work full-time jobs as an adult and for the government for you know state government for federal government um for you know not-for-profit organizations working with women in crisis Mm. and my intuition i was working my jobs and going through this processes that you need to to follow the policies and procedures but my intuition would be screaming at me do this help this person do that and Mm. naturally the empath side took over and um, I couldn't help but go above and beyond and help these people. And, you know, <clears throat> um, it felt like I needed to step this up a notch. So I was like, all right, well, if I'm getting more and more messages about these people, maybe I need to do something. So I ended up, the universe forced me into a position of um, having a physical injury, mm-hmm. uh, which forced me to break my hand. So I broke my hand in a softball injury. Um, we won the game though. Oh, uh-huh. yeah. Um, and I had that time off we ended up having um, a push to what do I need to do with my days if I'm doing nothing if I'm off work I need to start doing more and more readings and I ended up developing my business for full time in that injury Um, that's awesome and then I got my bricks and mortar um, property first in Capera in um, Brisbane so yeah oh that's the best and isn't it so common that people that have been caught up in the matrix or the do, 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 go, go, go are then stopped somehow by something. And it's like, huh. And should the ones that pause and look at it from that sort of energetic perspective go, oh, others just go, I'm injured and sit and wallow in the pity story (laughs) and then go back to their (laughs) shitty matrix job. But I love that you broke away. (laughs) So this literally, um, so this is part of that coming back to that first um, question that you asked about what makes me tick. I had a partner at the time and he knew how passionate I was about having new experiences. Like we are here to experience. You want the answer to why am I here? What's the meaning of life? It's to freaking experience, man. Yeah. Like get out there. Have get it amongst all. it. Yes. So when I got this injury, it was a full, it's a metacarpal and it was just snapped in half. <clears throat> I, was, I was playing third base and I was really excited. I had a really weird, weird feeling that morning. Like, I don't know why, but this may be my last game. I don't know. 
Um, and this lady, I don't know if anyone knows about baseball or softball, but there was the other team member. She was on second base. I was at third base and she had no business running as in it, nothing happened in the game to make her run. Mm. And she just ran straight to me to become safe on my base. And I grabbed the ball. I had the ball in my hand and mm. I tagged her out, but she bulldozed me to the point where I, it snapped instantly. She yeah. stood up and I was instantly like, oh, you okay? Am I Okay but we got her out and we won the game. But she said, I'm so sorry. I don't remember what happened the last five seconds. I blacked out. I don't know why I ran. They had, I would have, wouldn't have done that if I was, had my wits about me. I said, that's okay. And I knew I'm like, Oh, something mm. made that happen. I couldn't hold the bat, went to hospital. And then when they declared me and they said, Oh, you know, the doctor came out very, very solemn. Sorry. Um, you've got a broken hand and with this very same hand that was broken I went oh my god that's awesome and I went to high five him and I'm oh shit that's right high five and he's like why are you happy to have a broken hand okay high five and I said I've never had a broken hand before yeah I've never had a broken bone this is so much fun like I've never Mm. had this experience this is worthy (laughs) I wonder what seed you planted for him right then you know, I wonder if he picked up anything from that or it was just something like, oh, she's crazy. Some Something ticked because he. I said, he literally said, why are you excited? I said, well, this is a new experience. Mm. I've never had this before. Oh, yeah. I hope way more of those experiences come into his life because people in those uh, hospitals, oh, my gosh, the life. Yeah. I couldn't yeah. do it. I could not do it. So I'm glad you did that for him. And what an amazing story. <laughs> Thank you for sharing with all of us. <laughs> it sparked something. And you've are you still in that shop in Capera in Brisbane? Uh, no, I am. Uh, that was my startup shop. It was um, my pilot program, and I loved it so much. It was my little seed seedling. Um, I have since developed and grown um, tenfold. I now um, occupy a shop in Townsville um, yeah, in the, the main, main area. Yeah, it's, it's good fun. It's tropical. It's coconuts. It's, it's you know, grab a cocktail on the beach kind of stuff. So. I'm coming. I'm getting on the plane tomorrow. Yeah, it's good for a tan as well. Yeah. So come and join us on my shout. Nice. So you've got a um, physical location up there as well? Yeah, yeah. So I have a shop um, on Ross River Road. It's called The Well Book and Candle and we sell things like... Um, uh, books and candles and crystals and mm. smudging supplies it's it smells divine it's delicious I love it already I can actually smell it <laughs> <laughs> good how good and uh what is your favorite crystal um I would have to say oh it's like saying which one's your favorite oh, I know. <laughs> it's hard it's hard <laughs> what are you doing to what's me? your favorite crystal today <sighs> three and night mm, why um I'm wear it um because yeah it's um the healer's healer and I feel like it rejuvenates me sometimes when I give so much to other people I feel like it gives to me and I'm very grateful for it Mm. and that's actually a really good question that's come off that is with people that work in your line of work you just give so much of yourself to others what do you do are some of your main self-care things that you do for you to replenish and fill your energetic cup yeah I do my best not to be a hypocrite I really do um because (laughs) (laughs) it's it's hard isn't it um because one of my main things is I practice so I I preach a lot of Mm. self-care um Mm. I'm forever telling people especially women um but men kind of forget themselves too they've forgotten you know people in the world self-care and I actually focus a lot of people's self-care on what their star sign is like okay so what okay let's do something real quick what's your star sign lovely Sagittarius you're a saggy okay so you would have a bit of a mix your self-care would need you've got two which is kind of polar opposites and that's okay you've got to embrace both of them one would be you need to get out and explore and be near the ocean yes. and you kind of run amok a little bit you know I do. Your hair down, have a bit of a fun party yeah and then on the other side um your self-care on the introvert side because you've got an extrovert introvert mm. balance right um, and then on your introvert side, you sometimes just need to be left alone and stay in your jammies, have a jammy day, watch mm. movies and just relax with some good quality like popcorn or, re- you know, food. Mm. Just, That's the one I like haven't that. learned about yet. That's the one I don't know yet because I'm over here partying and adventuring through the mountains. <laughs> <laughs> but I am, this one has just sort of come into my life only in the last couple of weeks and uh, I'm learning how to feel as well, which is really exciting. So this beautiful slow yin self-care and the yeah. feeling 
wow oh my god it is like blowing my mind yeah Yeah. Mm. um so i i um probably two or three times maybe even more i'm i spoil myself with a hot bubble bath magnesium salts some lavender oils um lavender i'm a lavender junkie i love that stuff yeah (laughs) i I think you can go past it so that's my self-care beautiful magnesium bath with some oils amazing Thank you uh, for sharing that too. I think it's really important to emphasize to everyone, listeners, um, viewers, whatever it is, self-care is not selfish. And sometimes self-care is just saying no to someone. Yes. No, sorry. I don't have space for that right now. Boundaries. That's so Mm. true. So true. Um, I have said to so many people, um, they say, oh, you know, I I, I better go. And they do it through obligation. I'm like, Mm. are you excited to go to the barbecue? Oh, no, not really. But I I guess I better. Well, don't go. Yeah. The world keeps spinning. Yeah. You know, people are not going to hate you. How dare you not come to my barbecue? You know what? I was a bit tired, bud. I want, just wanted to veg out. And, you know, sometimes you don't even have to give a reason. You can just say, hey, thank you so much, but I'm just a bit tired. Oh, you know, like you don't have to give a reason. So even we're conditioned to say that. I'm like, thanks, but I'll see you next time. Yeah. 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 I love it. And, um, you know, you don't have to just jump in and start doing that off the bat really like crazily. You can just start small. Real. Mm, yeah. Mm. Oh, oh, I can give you. I can give you an hour, but I can't stay all day. You know. Yeah. yeah I can help you out, but yeah, yeah. Boundaries, healthy, good. Oh my god, they feel so good. I love them, and I'm glad <laughs> that we spoke about them today. Thank you. Um. So, if the listeners are interested in learning more about psychic mediumship, about the mentor work that you do, around the self care through the star sign, any of the stuff that you do, or even your physical location. What advice have you got for the listeners today that they might be able to take away? Ooh, that's huge. <laughs> huge. I know. Huge. Oh, my gosh. Um, oh, my gosh. So, so those I'm, curious about your world. Yeah. Um, get in contact. Feel free to get in contact. So, okay. So psychic medium work and spiritual work in general, it has to be a good fit. It has to be um, a good fit. Just like you're going to a GP, um, <laughs> You want to make sure that they're going to listen to you, that they connect with you. Now, I may or may not be the right psychic medium for everyone out there, um, but you have to make sure that you gel and you resonate with that person because it is a form of energy connection. Yeah. Um, so whoever you're drawn to, whoever you're you're connected with, you have to, because a lot of trust goes both ways. Yeah. So whether you want to have a reading with someone or whether you want to work with them and have them be your spiritual mentor so you can grow your own intuition and on, on mm-hmm. your own spiritual journey, that's a big deal. So choose well, shop around, get that feeling. And I would always, always, always encourage, um, this might step on some religious toes here, but um, I'm a big fan of spirituality being um, Mm self-led in the way that if you were to go to um, a a church, for example, you would, and not any denomination in particular, but you would go to um, a church and you would have a a hierarchy there, whether it's a priest, a pastor, rabbi, whatever it Mm -hmm. is, um, a leader there. They would be your go-between between, between, you know, you and God, right? You would have that spirituality and what is really important for psychic mediumship and your own spiritual growth is your direct connection. And that's not a bad thing. That's you. And I say this to people all the time. If you're praying, and you praying is you talking to God, you talking to the universe, you talking to your guides or angels, whatever you want to mm. entitle it to be. Your intuition is God talking to you. Yes. So you've got that direct link. So mm. you just need to grow it and have that right mentor to grow you and empower you and teach you how to do it. Mm. My work that I do, I find it funny because it is my intention through the work I do is to empower people so much that it makes spirit, um, psychic mediums obsolete because mm. I want to empower you oh, so yeah. much so you don't need me anymore because you're already connected. You already know your own yeah. thing. You know? <laughs> wow, what a powerful and amazing and abundant world uh, that vision is, yeah. right, where we actually listen to ourselves and connect to ourselves on the deepest of deep levels. Like, whoo, Trust. imagine the relationships that shit would be out of this world. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, what so a if, goal. It, if anyone wants to get in t- contact with me, they can go to my website, um, missyrivers.com or find me on my social medias, Instagram, YouTube, or um, Facebook. And um, yeah, get in contact. If they were in Townsville, we run sister circles once a month on the new moon so we can manifest and do nice visualizations yeah. and hold space. Yeah. So you're welcome <laughs> to come lovely. 
um, and my shop, Well Book and Candles on um, Ross River Road. We do uh, psychic medium um, development groups and that happens oh, a lot awesome. too. Oh, that sounds amazing. Damn it. Why do I live so far away? Come yeah. back to Brisbane. Come, come up. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for your time, your wisdom, and all that you have gifted us today with your presence. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on the podcast. Thank you for being you, lovely. I appreciate it. Bye. Blessings. Bye.